Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing some organic chemistry. Oh boy! No, 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 it's cool, I promise, really. Today we're going to be making a really cool compound called tetrachloroethylene diamine. Now it only needs four ingredients and all four of those are liquids. So, starting from right to left, we have six grams of ethylene diamine, 36 grams of glacial acetic acid, another 36 grams of distilled water, and uh, you also need about 800 milliliters of, um, oh, wrong side there, sorry, um, 800 milliliters of 6% sodium hypochlorite. So, uh, let's get to the process, shall we? Okay, so I'm going to get my distilled water, 36 grams of it, and by mixing it with uh, thir another 36 grams of glacial acetic acid, we're going to make a roughly 50% glacial acetic acid solution by weight. Or, yeah, by weight. So, you won't get much of an exotherm there, uh, but it's no real big deal because you're going to get a hell of a lot of exotherm in the next step, that's for sure. Alrighty, so now drop-wise we're going to add the ethylene diamine to the glacial acetic acid solution. You're going to get a lot of smoke and a lot of exotherm. That's pretty normal. Ethylene diamine is a strong base and we're adding it to a fairly strong solution of acid. Here we're making the salt, ethylene diamine diacetate. Alrighty, that should be about all of it. Now we're just going to let this stir and cool down for a little bit while. Alrighty, now we're going to have to take our hypochlorite and our ethylene diamine salt solution outside or in a very well ventilated area. Because the stuff we're about to make is no bueno. Let's go. Okay, now that we're outside or in a very well ventilated area, we can continue. So, what we got here is 800 milliliters of a 6% sodium hypochlorite solution. And to that we're going to add our acidic solution of ethylene diamine acetate. This will form the tetrachloroethylene diamine, which will sort of oil out a solution at the bottom as a very bright yellow oil. And trust me, if you've never smelled a chloramine itself, or a substitute chloramine, you're in for a treat. Uh, it's one of probably the worst smelling categories of compounds I've ever made or even come in contact to. It's just disgusting. Uh, luckily, this stuff isn't awful. Uh, not as bad as monochloramine or dichloramine or even uh, nitrogen trichloride, but uh, it is still pretty bad and extremely lacrimatory. So please keep that in mind if you do make this. Okay, so what we're going to see when we add this is sort of a milky color uh, forming in this. Well, not milky color, but sort of a, a milky, uh, almost looks like a precipitate, but it's not. What I believe it is is a very finely divided form of the um, NNNN uh, tetrachloroethylene diamine. Uh, and basically, as I stir it, I'm just going to stir it with this pipette, uh, so I can also uh, just pipette it out when it oils out at the bottom. Uh, when I stir it around, it'll sort of, um, I, I don't know, it'll just sort of get together, like, and just form a big sort of pool at the bottom. So, we'll go ahead and see that now. Just add it slowly, because this reaction is slightly exothermic, so we don't want it to get too hot. Otherwise, we'll probably have, you know, organic chloramine vapors spilling out, and it'll be kind of suck so let's go ahead and add this uh, so we'll go ahead and see that milky sort of effect go ahead and stir this bit you have to wear gloves for this I don't know how toxic this stuff is but uh, being a chloramine and all I would assume it's fairly toxic if not very toxic so yeah I can already start to smell it really acrid, pungent, sort of, uh, like, how do I describe it? It's really disgusting, though. 
sort of like clinical or industrial. If you ever smelled chlorine dioxide, which I hope you haven't, then this is sort of like that, but more metallic. It's like chlorine dioxide, but more metallic is how I can describe it best. Okay, that should do it. That's all of it added. So I'm going to go ahead and stir this around for a little while more, and then we can go ahead and check the bottom. Uh, if you've ever made chloroform before, this will sort of act like that, uh, where you can just sort of check the bottom, and, you know, it'll be there. So I'm going to stir this for a little while longer, hopefully get some of these tiny droplets to uh, sort of coalesce, that's the word I was looking for, uh, into larger sort of droplets, and uh, collect to the bottom. So I'll come back in a few minutes, hopefully we'll have a nice layer of uh, tetrachloroethylene diamine on the bottom. Yeah, oh, your eyes are definitely going to be burning uh, in this if you don't have super good ventilation. It's not a really windy day, thankfully for the camera's microphone, but not so much for my eyes. Oh, man. So what I believe is happening here is the ethylene diamine in the glacial acetic acid solution. Uh, well, the glacial acetic acid is reacting with the sodium hypochlorite to form hypochlorous acid, which then probably reacts, so you guys how reactive it is, with the ethylene diamine acetate, um, forming the tetrachloroethylene diamine, which uh, then sort of, I wouldn't call it precipitate, uh, because it's not a solid, but it uh, definitely does come out of solution. We can already see some of the, uh, oh, I don't know if you were able to see, but uh, there are little yellow droplets at the top. These shouldn't really be here. Uh, they really should be at the bottom, but that is the tetrachloroethylene diamine. It's just a weird thing with surface tension, I guess. I'll go ahead and stir it, see if I can get those down. Yeah, that seemed like it worked. They're gone now. Okay, let's go ahead and check the bottom and see if there is uh, any of our product there. And as we can see, we have a nice layer of our yellow tetrachloroethylene diamine at the bottom. So what you can do now is probably just wait a bit longer to let uh, some more of these droplets that are in this milky layer um, sort of coalesce and drop down to the bottom. Or you can uh, just collect this and uh, put it in a dram vial like I did, which is probably what I'm going to do now, and then uh, leave it for a while and see if it'll, you know, drop anything else out. So... I'm going to go ahead and uh, basically put it into a vial. Okay, so I have an 8 dram vial here. It's about 30 milliliters capacity. And I'm just going to uh, separate off the uh, oil at the bottom. Into here. Oh boy, that is really pungent. <clears throat> Okay, so let's see what we got for a yield. Okay, 39.23. So I know that the vial is 26.23 grams, so that would be 39 minus... Fuck, I'm not good at math. 13 grams, 13 grams. So this would be... Probably about 13 grams, uh, counting the water that we, uh, you know, inevitably got in there from the pipetting. 25 grams overall, uh, from both my runs. I did this last night just to make sure it worked, and it really did. Um, I don't know why this one weighs less, actually. I, there's probably even more in there, because I pipetted some in there this morning. Holy shit. Yeah, no, there's, there's definitely a lot, fuck, there's a lot more in there. Okay, so that'd be about 28.8 grams of this shit, so, um, oh boy, uh, I have no idea what I'm gonna do with this, uh, apparently it's explosive, not very well, but, uh, it's basically the definition of oxygen balance negative, uh, as you can see in this video. Somebody come and look at this. Look at oh this. shit, what is that? Yeah, uh, not too good. Um, it looks a lot more vibrant yellow um, in real life than it does on camera. The camera kind of washes out the colors. So I don't know why. But, uh, yeah, super stinky, super lacrimatory, um, mildly explosive tetrachloroethylene diamine. About uh, 28 grams of it from two runs. I have no idea what percent yield that is, but uh, it's pretty good. So, uh, yeah, 
Thank you so much for watching. This is a really fun uh, video to make. Kind of a new thing. Um, as you know, I love doing uh, videos on stuff nobody has done before. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. I can like if you want to, subscribe if you want to. Uh, and thank you very much for watching. So in this video, I'm going to be making some organic peroxides. FBI, open up!